is uh, Jason Recker, and uh, I'm proud to be part of Project Go Pink. Um, when Susie speaks of um, things starting around her kitchen table, uh, I was one of the fortunate or unfortunate people that she suckered to the first meeting uh, of Project Go Pink around a kitchen table. And um, the reason that I joined Project Go Pink, uh, my life took an unexpected turn on a uh, refuel stop of Air Force One in Alaska heading to the Beijing Olympics and getting off the plane, um, President and Mrs. Bush were arguing back and forth on how to properly pronounce the governor of Alaska's name, whether it was Palin or Palin. Six months later, uh, three months later, I found myself um, on the campaign trail as a senior advisor to Governor Palin and uh, have been with her on and off for the last three years. And um, Terry Kristoff, part of our advisory board said, I I've never seen this movie, The Undefeated, so I'm looking forward to seeing it. And she said, you've lived this movie. Um, and she's right. I've lived some of the experiences of this movie, but uh, I've never lived what this woman and her family have gone through over the last three years. And to go from working for, from a male politician to a female politician, I thought would be very easy and seamless. I can tell you, and you all know, it is the exact opposite. I've never seen the scrutiny that uh, she has gone through and survived over the last three years and uh, continues to and fights for what she believes in even today as you saw her op-ed in the Wall Street Journal about crony capitalism which somehow has now become the buzzword of the 2012 campaign. So uh, I'd like to introduce Steve Bannon. We're honored that he's joined us. He's put together this film and I for one am really excited to watch it. So thank you very much Steve for being here. Jason, thank you. Um, it's people like, uh, you can tell a lot about people, about who they attract to work with them. And Governor Palin's team, as uh, epitomized by um, Jason, is uh, top notch. I want you to think back for a second. Um, September 18th, 2008. You know, what were you doing? What was your life like? Because that day, is probably, if not the most important date in your life, in the top three. Because it essentially is the path that led to this ballroom. At 11 o'clock in the morning on September 18th, which by the way, Governor Palin and John McCain, I believe, were leading by three points in the Gallup poll that morning. They had closed a eight-point deficit, as you're going to see in the film in a second, from August 24th in less than three weeks, they had closed the biggest gap in Gallup poll history in a presidential campaign. And I think on the morning of the 18th, they were three points up. The um, Republican appointed chairman of the Federal Reserve, Ben Bernanke, and the um, Republican Secretary of the Treasury, Hank Paulson, went to see the sitting Republican President, George Bush, and told him that um, because of the way that the Lehman Brothers bankruptcy had been handled on Monday with no preparation and Lehman had just gone into to bankruptcy and the free fall, everybody now realized that Lehman Brothers was at the heart of the commercial paper market and the money market accounts that you guys all keep your money in. Um, and that the world economy, the world financial system, was melting down. Uh, President Bush had this briefing and sent those two guys up to Capitol Hill where they met with the senior leadership of both parties. We now know this because this meeting was very secret. Um, the memoirs of, of Hank Paulson and, and, and several participants. Uh, C-SPAN had an had a, um, interview with Congressman Kanjorski. And, and what they were told is that the American financial system was going to melt down in 48 hours. That the world financial system was going to melt down by the following Monday or Tuesday. And that global unrest would start in about two or three weeks. And that the Secretary of Treasury had come up because he was asking for one trillion dollars in cash and he needed it immediately. Now, the, the 20th century is the, um, the most, it's the bloodiest century in mankind's history. Almost 200 million people died in, in wars. 
or famines that were related to wars, or because of disease that was related to war. It's by far the most barbaric century in man's history. And the United States had some tremendous enemies. Kaiser Wilhelm, um, the military junta in, in Japan, uh, the Nazis, Mussolini and the fascist, Lenin, Stalin, the communist. Uh, in the 21st century, we started off by having uh, Osama bin Laden. We never had an adversary or an enemy that could conceive of destroying our financial system like we did ourselves. Now, you in this room, and I think there's a hundred and some of you guys here for the, for the, uh, for the um, conference, are among the most engaged people in our country. And do you have an explanation of what happened on September 18th? Do you have a full understanding of what went on? You know, since that time, we've started to understand the, the dilemma our country's in and really the world's in. Um, we hit $15 trillion in debt last night, I think around 9 or 10 o'clock. That, that's, that's the tip, that's the tippy tip, as a kid would say, of the iceberg. Dr. Kotlikoff of Boston University uh, believes, and he's a very, Harvard PhD, runs Boston University, one of the most respected economists in the country. He actually says that our, our, our debt, our true debt, on a present value basis, the way you're taught to do it in business school, is over $200 trillion. $200 trillion. Even conservative estimates have it at over $100 trillion, right? We, we have $2 trillion of, of unfunded student loan obligations. We have $3 trillion in fan, of, of, we have $3 trillion of, of zombie mortgages we won't face up to that are underwater. At the state level, there's a trillion dollars of unfunded pension liabilities. We have $7 trillion of, uh, of, uh, of um, trade debt. If you take up all the assets in our country, add them all up, all the stocks, all the bonds, all the private companies, the New York Stock Exchange, NASDAQ, if you take all the cash, all the real estate, if you take all your jewelry, you take every asset we have in this country, it's about, I think, 50 to $60 trillion. And we have anywhere from obligations from 100 to $200 trillion. We have to understand something. The baby boom generation has been a participant in the destruction of our country. The, um, the solution or the set of solutions that have to be embraced and have to be um, implemented are, are, are not pleasant. All the easy choices are 10 and 15 and 20 years in back of us. All, all, all the non-painful range of alternatives we've left years ago. Every choice we have in front of us is a tough choice. And all you're being fed and, and you are the most engaged of, a, of the population, is complete and total happy talk. The big budget debate we had last summer, when they talk about cutting the budget, by the way, federal budget is $3.75 trillion. The deal that they put together, which was to basically agree to budgets for two years, has federal spending in the next two years of $7.5 trillion. That's locked in. The budget cuts they were talking about that they agreed to were 61 billion dollars, and they will never make those. When, they, when you hear all these budget debate uh, talks, it's not about cutting anything. It's about a theoretical cut to a rate of growth in a base in an out year that's never going to happen. You do understand that, right? It's not going to happen. It's the reason the Tea Party was created. It's the reason I've made these films. And the reason I've taken a Friday night, not just to show it, but to come and talk to you, because here's the scary, really scary part, is that you are the salvation of this country. And if you guys blink, and if you guys 
continue to accept the happy talk and not hold people accountable, the country won't go away. We'll still be here. It'll be very different. This is the fourth great crisis in American history. We've had the revolution. We had the Civil War. We had the Great Depression and World War II. These happen in about 80 or 100 year cycles.